Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here. We're going to talk all about the seasonal monsoon and why it matters coming up. But first, this is a live camera in Colorado. This is from the top of Arapahoe Basin at about 13,000, looking west, southwest towards the 10 mile range. Breck is back there, Keystone. Blue skies. We've had an abnormally wet pattern here in Colorado and across parts of the west since like May 1st. Now that pattern has finally broken and we're moving into a much drier or more normal more normal pattern. Here's what I'm going to be talking about today. A normalization of this pattern through the end of June into early July. Drier pattern. Then we get into monsoon season, which runs July 1 through the end of August. We'll look at a preview of that and why it matters. And we'll also talk about the contribution from El Nino because it, it does tend to have an impact on monsoon season across the Rocky Mountains. So we'll look at all that coming up. But I want to show you where we've been. This has been the dominant jet stream pattern since like May 1st. Take note of the, the southern branch, the southern jet, the subtropical jet stream on the bottom of the, of the screen running through the Baja, Southern Cal, and through New Mexico, Arizona. That has been like a conveyor belt, opening the door, escorting areas of low pressure and lots of moisture, extra moisture into the west. And that has what's been loading the atmosphere and loading the dice, so to speak, and providing all of this extra moisture, this rain, these thunderstorms, um, and cloud cover, cooler temperatures across the west. So all of that is playing in. Well, now that's eroding. It's dissolving, and we're moving into a different forecast. Let me show you what it looks like in the middle of the atmosphere. So this is not to jet stream level, but lower down. But this gives you an idea of what's happening in the middle of the atmosphere. Big areas of low pressure. Most of the West has been engulfed by lower than normal atmospheric pressures. You can see it with the greens and the blues. And I've marked the areas of low pressure. This was actually valid just a couple of days ago, a few days ago. But this has been the trend over the last month and a half. Um, and let me show you where we're headed. By July 1st, boom, into high pressure. High pressure has exploded. It has taken over a big ridge sitting across the southern Rockies. I actually put together... A, a contrast slider on this. So take a look at this. This is pretty interesting. So it's the same graphics I showed you. That was June 18th. That's the forecast for July 1. It's June 18th. A complete reversal of the pattern by the time we get into late June and early July. Pretty cool stuff. All right, let me show you what the precipitation anomalies could look like. So this is valid July 1st, and notice I've marked sort of a ridging area there underneath the arc, drier than normal conditions. So a normalization of the pattern going from wetter than normal now to drier than normal by the end of June and early July, with most of the extra moisture or above normal precip remaining north of the desert southwest. So at this point, you look. I look at this and I think, okay, higher than normal pressures, lower than uh, the, the pressure. The, for, the precipitation anomalies are all below normal. Um, the monsoon isn't here yet by July 1st. So it isn't there by July 1st. And it isn't forecast. The data does not suggest that we turn the page to above normal precip until the 9th or 10th of July. So sometime between the 9th or 10th of July and about July 1920. So in that, that time period, it looks like we'll flip and we'll start to see some above normal precip values move in from the desert southwest. That, to me, represents the start of monsoon season. So what's the bottom line? Monsoon season, to me, looks like it's going to run about one to two weeks behind schedule and start around the 9th or 10th of July instead of July 1st. That's when I think we'll start to see that flow. So that's what monsoon season is. It's this rich flow of moisture that comes out of the Gulf and out of the Pacific and collides over the desert southwest and adds extra moisture into the atmosphere of Colorado, Utah, Wyoming, Idaho, Montana, New Mexico, Arizona, and makes afternoon weather, afternoon thunderstorms more likely with hail, heavy rain, and lightning. That's the payoff from this. Let me show you what I'm talking about. This will be make it very obvious. Look at the flashes per day in Colorado. Notice where we maximize July, August. During the monsoon, that's when we typically see the most lightning in Colorado, especially over the mountains and the elevated terrain. Lightning is our number one weather killer here in Colorado. That's why it matters. Um, El Nino tends to disrupt. It tends to disrupt the... Um, onset and the intensity 
of monsoon season. So what we're what I'm forecasting is not terribly surprising, um, but this is what we're actually seeing happen right now. So thanks, guys, for tuning in here. Always appreciate it, and take care.